this is Christine Ballas, and coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we're entering into. It is the month of Kislev, and the word Kislev means trust, hope, and security. And so I was reminded by the Lord in the year that we're in right now, 5784, look at that beautiful butterfly. Um, so cool. Um, in the year of the door, 5784, there's a door behind me. And also the Lord is the door, right? And he's also our good shepherd. And it talks about this in John 10. And so the Lord is our door. He's our good shepherd. He lays down his life to guard the sheepfold. So that brings us rest, trust, hope, and security. And also in John 10, it talks about Hanukkah. And that's all in this month of Kislev. So enjoy the chalkboard teaching and thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we're entering into. It is the month of Kislev. And the word Kislev means trust, hope, and security. And you know, the more I study God's calendar, I realize that it is just another part of his creation, part of his handiwork that all points to relationship with him. And so in this month of Kislev, he is highlighting and reminding us where our true trust, our true hope, and our true security is found. And it's in him. And you know, during trying times where we have put our trust or who we have put our trust in is often revealed, you know? And so the Lord wants us to trust him because we can trust him with every area of our lives, be it with our health, our family, our work, even our nation. So he wants to show himself trustworthy to us. And you know, it's part of our covenant with him. The Lord says that he gives us life and life abundantly. And he also wants us to enjoy all of our benefits. And that begins with trusting and believing in him. And you know, the Bible says that um, we have a hope in Jesus, but he's not just any hope. We, we don't just hope or wish or maybe pray. No, the word says that he is our living hope in first Peter. So Jesus is alive and active in our lives. He is faithful. He is true. So as we put our faith in him, guys, we will be secure. My name is Christine Ballas and I'm blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you in real time. So thank you so much for taking time to watch and I pray that you are encouraged through this teaching and that it draws you closer to the Lord himself. So God does not force us to do anything. I think that is so awesome of him and that means he loves us so much that he's just going to let us choose. It's called free will, right? So even in believing him, you know, from the, from the get-go and then trusting him in different areas of our lives, he leaves it really up to us. And so Kislev is the ninth month in the spiritual calendar. And the number nine is actually connected with a choice. It's connected to the Hebrew letter Tet, which is a letter or a number that is a choice of life or death. And so basically, that's what the Lord offers us. He says, you choose and choose this day whom you will serve, right? So the reality is, though, you know, when we are called to trust someone, we really need to know if they are for us and not against us, right? We just don't trust people automatically. We need to know who they are, right? We have to have that relationship built up. And so we really only trust people when we know that we are loved by them. And the same thing is true with God. It all goes back to the love of God. And the Lord wants us to know how much he loves us. Not how much we love him, but how much he loves us and how much he even likes us, you know? And this, guys, is something we can never outgrow. We can never stop learning. Ephesians 3, it's Paul's prayer and, and the Lord's heart for us as believers. He says, being rooted and grounded in his love so that we can comprehend the breadth, 
the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, so that we, so that we may be filled up to the fullness of God. And I love the Passion Translation that says, when we discover we are loved by God, we become the resting place of his love. So guys, he is love and love never fails. So he never fails. So let us ask the Lord to show us how much he loves us and he will. And the more we realize how much we are loved by God, the more we will trust him. In fact, Galatians 5, 6 says this, that faith works by love. So in other words, the more we know that we are loved by God, trust and obedience will just come automatically. So I encourage you guys and I encourage myself to ask the Lord to show us how much he loves us individually every day of our lives. We can never outgrow his love, guys. So now, Kislev is a month that is associated with darkness. And part of the reason is because of some events that have happened in biblical history. And also, even in the physical, it is the darkest time of the year right now. The days are growing shorter, right? So it's physically getting darker. But we can have confidence in the dark. And we don't have to be afraid, right? And um, I have heard it said that in the Bible, it says, fear not, 365 times. And I've heard it said, like, one for every day of the year. You don't have to be afraid, you know? So the, the question is, well, how do we not fear? You know, and I think our automatic response is, oh, I just have to trust God more. Oh, I just have to conjure up some more faith. But, you know, really the answer, the revelation that came to me is that, his perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. So when fear rises up in us, we need to preach the love of God to ourself in that area. And so I'm realizing that in the word, when it says fear not 365 times, one for every day, it's actually saying, know how much I love you. 365 days of the year. So when we know that we're loved by God, all of a sudden we get a boldness, we get a confidence, we get a really holy, holy attitude that we are loved, that we can go forth, that God is for us, he is not against us. We have confidence in the dark because he loves us. Now in the midst of the darkness, God is light. And, um, you know, just a side note that biblical scholars actually believe that in this darkest month of the year that Jesus, the light of the world, was conceived. Let's be reminded that the darkness is light to the Lord and actually things are being conceived in this season, right? Conception happens in the dark. And so God is the light and as we abide in him, our path will grow brighter and brighter. So we need to abide in him. We need to guard what we read, guard what we hear, and guard what we speak because God has good news for us, right? But the enemy, of course, he wants to come against that and give us bad news. And, you know, there are false prophets out there that are publicizing, you know, headlines, you know, fear, you know, but guys, we have a better report. We have the good news of the gospel. And, you know, but at the same time we shouldn't be surprised that the world is going this way you know John 1 says in him was life and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it right so we can't really even expect the world to get it but guys we are children of the light so we should get it, right? We have been transferred, the word says, out of the kin kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. And his word is a lamp unto our feet, not the USA Today. It's his word, right? And it will illuminate our path. So get in his word. He is just waiting to illuminate us. It says the entrance of his words bring light. And that is what we want truly. Now, during the darkest time of the year, during this season, you may find yourself going to bed a little earlier, or at least getting your pajamas on perhaps a little bit earlier. And that is related to this month because the action is sleep and rest. 
And you know, you can have the best bed in the world, you know, the finest Egyptian cotton sheets, but still have no rest, right? Because we don't get rest until we trust in him. And Psalm 127 verse 2 says that the Lord gives to his beloved even in his sleep. So, you know, the Lord gives to us in our sleep as he uh, rejuvenates our bodies, he brings health, but he gives us rest. And it says he gives it to his beloved. So when we know we're his beloved is when we really will rest, not only in the night, but in the day, we can have that rest of God 24 seven. But when we're resting in his love, then we can begin to even dream with him right? And Kislev this month is also known as the month of dreams. And it's known as the month of dreams because the Torah portions for this month have nine of the 10 dreams that are recorded in Genesis. So these Torah portions are basically, the Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament, and it has been divided up into portions so that the Torah can be read through in a year. So every month has certain portions. So the month of Kislev has these, these portions, and it's Genesis 28 through 45. Like I said, nine out of the 10 dreams in Genesis are included. So let's gain insight from those biblical dreamers as we read through. Let's ask the Lord to illuminate his word to us. And also let's commit the dreams of our hearts afresh to him. And it says that he will give us the desires of our heart as we delight in him, right? And as we delight in his love, again, as we know that we are loved by him, his dreams become our dreams. And also we can ask him to illuminate the dreams of our sleep because we know that the Lord can speak to us in the night. We can gain insight and wisdom and even mourning as we sleep. And so if you're asking the Lord to give you insight in your dreams while you're sleeping, that does require you to go to bed, right? So we need to guard our physical sleep. We need to rest. We need to get physical rest. We need to watch our sleeping patterns. And you know, again, the enemy comes against that. In the scripture in Daniel, it says that the enemy wants to wear us out, wear us down. He wants us to stay up at night and worry or work all night or work 24 seven. And meanwhile, God is a God of rest and he wants us to always start from a place of rest in our mind and our thoughts and our will and our emotion and even in our bodies. He wants shalom, wholeness in our homes and even in the homes of our bodies. So guys, we wanna cast our cares upon him. First Peter 5, 7, because he cares for us. In other words, because he loves us. So we can cast our cares upon him and we will have rest. We will have sleep knowing that he loves us. And you know, that same verse is almost word for word in Isaiah 55, 22, and instructs us, it says, cast your cares upon him and he will sustain you. He will support you. So as we cast our cares upon him, what do we get? We get love and support. And isn't that what we all want? We always say, oh, if I can only have love and support. And meanwhile, the Lord is like, I've got it for you, you know? So let's receive, let's give it to him so we can get his love and support. Life and life abundantly enough and extra. And this whole idea about support and sustaining us is depicted in the Hebrew letter that's connected with this month. It's the Hebrew letter Semek, and it looks like this right here. And it means to trust, to hope, and to support. And it also means like to lean upon or like to hold up a plant up against a lattice. And so that reminded me of John 15. So be sure to check out John 15, the vine and the branches. In verse five, it says, I am the vine, this is Jesus talking, and you are the branches. He who abides in me will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. And then it goes on in verse nine, it says, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you, so remain or abide in my love. Again, it all goes back to being loved, knowing that we are loved brings rest, 
brings confidence. And as we read John 15, as we abide in his love, we also bear much fruit. So as we stay connected, as we abide in the love of God, you know, his love, it's true. It never fails us, gives us everything we need. And also we want to be reminded, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth so that he may strongly support whose heart is completely his. So his eyes upon us to strongly support us and love us so we can bear much fruit and have rest in our lives. Now, Samek also means to come full circle. It actually looks like a full circle. And so let's take some time this month while we're resting and trusting in the Lord to look back at the faithfulness of God, how he brought us through this year. We want to look back and we want to magnify God's faithfulness. And we want to do so with a heart of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a sign of maturity. Are we walking around complaining? That's like babies do that, right? We are mature. We want to be mature. A heart of maturity speaks thanksgiving, speaks life, right? Again, we want to not only remember God's faithfulness, but we want to declare his faithfulness to our own souls so we can like hear it out loud and believe it, change the atmosphere, and to remind others of the faithfulness of God. So let's declare his faithfulness. Now in this month, again, a month associated with darkness in the middle of this month right here shines the feast of lights. It is the feast of Hanukkah front and center here on the chalkboard, the feast of Hanukkah. Now Hanukkah, that word means dedication. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the feast. So it's really a feast of dedication. And it's referring to the dedication of the temple, that second temple. So just real briefly, I'll give you a history real quick on Hanukkah. Basically, the enemies of God set out to destroy and ransack the second temple. And the, the funny thing is that this was not like a surprise attack where suddenly, you know, the enemies came upon, you know, the people of God. No, actually over time, the people of God just let the enemies right in. How did they do that? Well, they started compromising. They started growing lukewarm little by little. Over time, they literally abandoned the altar of God, the word of God. And so the enemy just had an open door to walk right in. And so they desecrated the temple. But there was a small but mighty band of brothers called the Maccabees. And they were not going to just stand there and watch this happen. In fact, their name means hammer. And they nailed it. And they nailed it and they defeated the enemy, not by their own might, but by God's power, by God's spirit. Just like in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And that is how the Maccabees took back the temple and rededicated it to God. And so when they were there in the midst of the destruction, they found one flask of sanctified oil that was used to light up the lampstand in the temple. So what they did with that one flask is they took that one flask and they lit up the lampstand. And even though they only had enough oil for one night, they decided that they would light it up. And the miracle of Hanukkah was that it lasted for eight days. So there's so much we can learn about the Feast of Hanukkah and how to apply it in real time in our lives. And so just a few things. The first thing is that it's a time of dedication. So if you've never dedicated your life to God, if you've never trusted your life to God, if you've never received the love of God to even trust him, today is the day of salvation. So I encourage you to do so. Dedicate your life to God and he will fill you up with his spirit. And as believers, we become the temples of God. It says that in Corinthians. And so we want to dedicate our bodies, our temples, or even rededicate, right? Our bodies, our minds, our dreams, our words 
to him. And we want to guard our temple. We don't want to abandon the altar of God. We don't want to waver. We want to stand like the lampstand, right? And he will light us up by his spirit. And we want to stand up for God's word. We want to stand up for righteousness. We want to stand firm like the Maccabees. We want to take action. And something else, we do not want to curse what looks like not enough. You know, when the Maccabees found that one flask of oil, they didn't look at it and say, this isn't enough and throw it away. No, they rejoiced over even just that little bit of oil. They thanked the Lord for it. They sanctified it. They set it apart. They lit up the lampstand. And what happened? God multiplied it. So we are encouraged to do the same thing, whether it be oil or loaves or fishes or our time or our money or our resources or our wisdom. We want to thank the Lord for the little and watch him multiply it before our very eyes. He will do it. All right, so lastly, talking about Hanukkah, you may want to consider celebrating this feast this year. You know, Jesus celebrated it, and you can find the Feast of Hanukkah in the New Testament. You can't even find it in the Old Testament. It's kind of funny. And it's found in the Gospels. John 10, 22 says right there that Jesus was celebrating this feast of dedication. So consider lighting up the menorah this year. Now, last month in Hezbon, the Lord gave us the rainbow of his covenant in the sky. And now here in the month of Kislev, the Lord is showing us our authority and our identity in Christ through the masters of the bow, through the tribe of Benjamin, and even in the constellation Sagittarius, which means the archer. So let's look at the tribe of Benjamin first. Benjamin was the 12th son born to Jacob and Rachel. And Rachel died in childbirth as she bore Benjamin, but on her deathbed, she called out and she named him Ben-Oni, which means son of my pain. But quickly, Jacob renamed him and he said, no, his name will not be son of my pain. His name will be Ben-Hamin, which means son of my right hand. And that is our true identity in Christ, that we are seated secure with him in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. And Benjamin, this tribe, they were masters of the bow. And it's kind of funny that their name means son of my right hand, but many of them in scripture says that they were left-handed. So I think they had, you know, the power of the spirit and the power of might because they were mighty warriors in God. And some biblical characters that you may know of that are from the tribe of Benjamin are Mordecai and Esther. King Saul, and even Saul, who became Paul in the New Testament. And so we want to learn even about being the beloved and being in his rest from the blessing that Moses spoke over this tranquil tribe. We read about that in Deuteronomy 33, 12. And it says of Benjamin, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him. For he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. So again, this is highlighting through Benjamin that rest comes when we know that we are the beloved of the Lord. And again, now the constellations declare the glory of the Lord and they all point to Jesus. It's like the gospel is on circuit over our head. So Sagittarius, like I said, also is the archer. And so it's underscoring now our authority in Christ. We do not fight against flesh and blood, right? It says in the word, we really wrestle against principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness. But we have been translated into the kingdom of light. We are children of the light. And so we want to stand in our authority and launch these arrows that the Lord gives us by his spirit from that 
very advantageous position that we have in him. You know, the enemy wants us to think that we are on the ground and that he has the upper hand, but it's totally the opposite, right? He is the father of lies. So the reality is we have the upper hand and he is on the ground. He is a defeated foe. So we stand high and secure on the rock of Jesus, on our salvation. So let's move this month in our authority from a position of victory. Let us keep our focus on the Lord shoot straight, right? We want to move quickly. We want to cut our losses. We want to pull back, you know, by his spirit with a bow in our, by the right hand of the Lord, by his spirit. And as we do, we will resist the enemy. He will flee and we will hit the target every time. And there was just one portion of scripture I have to highlight. Psalm 18 just totally highlights how the Lord is our strength and giving us this position of authority. Psalm 18 says, For you, Lord, light my lamp. The Lord, my God, illuminates my darkness. He sets me upon high places. He trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You, Lord, have also given me the shield of salvation and your right hand upholds me. And it's your gentleness that makes me great. That is our secure position in his love. So in closing, you know, without Jesus, we are in the dark, right? But when we put our trust in him, when we know we are loved by him, his love illuminates the darkness and it casts out all of our fear. And you know, it's his perfect love that gives us boldness and confidence to follow him anywhere, right? And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So we want to thank you, Lord God. We thank you for being the light within us. We thank you for your great love for us, Lord, that gives us boldness and confidence, Lord. So Father, we do show us every day, every day of our lives, not just every day of this month, how much you love us, Lord, so we can be bold, so we can stand and shine for you, God, with boldness and confidence in this season and all of the days of our lives with you, God. So may we just hear his words afresh as we go forth in this month, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It's his benediction to us. Jesus says this to us, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but puts it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and they may glorify your Father who is in heaven. So we have his blessing and we have his love. So let's go forth with him, abiding in his awesome love and light. Thanks for listening and be blessed.